Hey, welcome back. I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel video 103. I'm going to take just a second and note for those of you who are watching these videos and don't see the blog entries that come with them, it's worth going to moresolutionsinc.com and finding the blog on these videos. I blog each time I release a video and sometimes there's text information in there that may make these videos easier to understand. So be sure and go to the blog there. It's uh, on Moore's Medical Metrics. That's the name of my blog there at moresolutionsinc.com. That's where you'll find more detail about these videos. That said, in Excel Video 101, we played with this forecast formula. 102, we did the y equals mx plus b. I want to show you the trend formula in Excel Video 103. The same idea is uh, trying to calculate from historical data that's represented by these blue columns when we forecast out three months, what are these three months? What's the uh, line here? What values are there? And, and how is Excel calculated? How can we go out in the future? We've looked at the slope and the y-intercept. Let me show you how this trend formula works. The thing that's tricky about this is it's a different kind of formula. It's an array formula. If you've never played with an array formula, if you look at the details, see a normal formula is, has an equals and then the formula. Look, see these brackets here? and here. It's the same kind of formula, um, trend C25 to C36, A25 to A36, the same kind of information, C25, C36, A25 to A36, very similar to what forecast did. But look how you enter a trend formula. I'll put another one right here. And what you do is we're going to do equals trend, and then the known Ys are here. And we'll put a four there, comma, the known x's are here, f four. And then I'm going to do the right parentheses, but normally I'd hit enter and I'd be done. When you're doing an array formula, notice two things. Number one, I'm not going to hit enter. And number two, I've highlighted this whole range. I'm going to do this whole thing at once. I'm going to do control, shift, and enter. And then I'm going to format, paint these numbers so they look the same. Make them a little bit bigger. And sure enough, I have the same numbers as I have all the way along. The, there's, so there's two things to this array formula. Number one, you, you select the range, and instead of hitting Enter when you're done with the formula, you do Control, Shift, and Enter. Number two, what I did when I did Y equals MX plus B, let's just delete these. I got this formula the way I wanted it, and then filled down to get these values. When I'm using an array formula, I get the whole array, and then when I do the control shift enter, it fills in all these formulas for me. The other thing I want to show you about array formulas is see in blue, the this is C25, C36, A25, A36. That works. For future values, when you're doing a forecast, we could just forecast the next period out and we were done. For a trend formula, we have to add one more variable here. Let me hit this function key. We're still going to give it the same known y's and the known x's. That hasn't changed. The historical data hasn't changed, and that's what goes here. What it wants here is the new x's. And then um, this constant down here is I've left it true to calculate the y-intercept, the, the b in y equals mx plus b for me. So what I need to do here is add this new variable. So what we're going to do, I'll enter this while we're at it. So we're going to equals trend, and then we want this comma this and then these are my new values to forecast and I'm going to put a shift there control shift and enter and then let's format paint these so they look like those that's what's going on with an array formula uh, you can get, I guess the bottom line is this you can get these numbers, using the forecast formula, using y equals mx plus b, and calculating the slope and the y-intercept, and you can get them using this trend function. And you can calculate the r-squared and see how closely this line follows the historical data and give you some feel for how reliable your forecast is going to be. There are three different ways to get the same answer, and like so many things in Excel, there's lots of different ways to get there. There's how to get uh, to the same place three different ways, and I hope over the course of these three videos, this forecasting thing has been helpful for you. Stay tuned next time. I have more stuff down below, and we'll play with uh, moving averages. Thanks for watching.